Today, designing Wi-Fi networks for quality. My guest today is Scott Pereira, director at Ivy Wave. And I'll ask him, what is the hardest thing about designing Wi-Fi networks? Join us right after this short message. When we made our first semiconductor back in 1983, we drew inspiration from it. To make a phone so light, you could hold it in one hand. And another one, you could literally wear on your other hand. We didn't stop there. Who would have thought you could make a TV smart before? Let alone a phone. We stayed ahead of the curve. With every one of our innovations progressing us all to the next. You see, true innovation only comes from looking in one direction, forward. One innovation inspires the next. Samsung. All right, welcome back everybody to another episode of Wi-Fi Now TV. My name is Klaus Hetting and today we're gonna to be talking to IB Wave about the super important topic of assuring the quality of Wi-Fi. But just before we do that, I want to uh, make this short announcement because we're only 12 days away from this year's number one Wi-Fi event in Washington, D.C. And uh, we have a fantastic program for you, including Google, Microsoft, Time Warner Cable, T-Mobile, you name it. I'm also going to do a fireside chat with FCC Commissioner Jessica Rosenworcel. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to do that. So if you're working anywhere in the wireless industry, don't miss it. Go to wifinowevents.com slash USA. Check it out and drop me a line, line at klaus at wifinowevents.com. If you have any questions, we would be delighted to have you there now. My guest today is um, Scott Pereira, Director of Partnerships and Innovation at Ivy Wave. Scott, great to have you on the show. Welcome. Thanks, Klaus, for having me. Scott, for those of our viewers who don't know Ivy Wave, can you start by giving us the, uh, the two minute introduction to what you guys are all about? Sure, so Ivy Wave is actually new in the Wi Fi space, but we've been around for about 13 years. Uh, we are a software company, and our specialty is really in doing everything to do with indoor wireless design. So we're kind of technology and vendor agnostic. We support every technology. And just recently, we developed a solution dedicated for the Wi-Fi market uh, in response to demands from our customers. Uh, we're present in about 90 countries around the world, and about 700 corporations have standardized on our platform for uh, doing wireless indoor designs. So all these corporations have standardized also for, on, on as far as the Wi-Fi product is concerned? Is that new? Well, the Wi-Fi product, as I mentioned, has been out for about a month, so we just ah. released it. We, we've always supported Wi-Fi, but I would say it wasn't uh, full-featured and, and there was a lot of uh, pieces missing. Just recently, we, we did a big push and we actually did a carve-out for a unique Wi-Fi solution. Right, so Scott, tell us a little bit about designing Wi-Fi for quality, because we all know that, uh, you know, Wi-Fi can be any, anywhere from absolutely fantastic and blazingly fast if you get it right, and it can be absolutely awful and non-existent if you get it wrong. I mean, if, when you, from your experience, when you look at this uh, issue, this problem, uh, what, is the, what is the hardest thing that carriers or whomever that it is that you're working with need to do to get the design right? Well, I would say the biggest difference is that Wi-Fi is a bit of a moving target in that a perfect design today can get affected by either someone turning on an access point on their phone, adding another AP, 
So the importance not only comes at the initial phase of the design, like when you're designing a traditional network, but there's a big disconnect between the maintenance and monitoring of that solution as time goes on. So I, I would say one of the biggest challenges for sure, doing that initial design is a challenge and you can try to future proof as much as you can, but we need solutions to be able to monitor, maintain those networks, and also evolve those networks as new Wi-Fi protocols come out. Right, so Scott, so, the, the, so your answer is basically get the design right to start with, but, but the monitoring part the, uh, should essentially be an online continuous monitoring of what's going on, or at least intermittently within short time intervals, right? Absolutely. You, you travel a lot just like myself, and I'm sure you've been in hotels where you have horrible Wi-Fi coverage, and that's typically the people at the hotel don't know why that's not working, but it's because someone went in, designed a Wi-Fi, and at that time it was working fine, but a year, two years have passed, and nobody's maintained or, or done a spot check to make sure that everything was still as per the original design. So that's what you recommend when, when you're speaking to customers, you have to continuously do the spot checks and so on, and presumably with your solutions as well that allow people to do that. Absolutely. So the way we designed our solution, for sure you can do the typical survey and prediction and design, but we also put a big emphasis on the life cycle of that venue, going back, being able to have uh, accessible tools to do a quick spot check, being able to have visibility on where the venues are, what technology is installed where, and our whole uh, cloud solution allows users to do that. Very good. So, Scott, let's talk a little bit about what uh, people like to call carrier grade Wi-Fi quality. And I don't think there's any particular, um, you know, accepted definition of that, but people tend to use the word. Uh, what is your view on that? Is there such a thing or, and, and, or do we need new standards that, that relate to that? Well, in my opinion, when people talk about carrier grade, uh, what I understand is that this means that as a user, let's say I'm an AT&T a Verizon or a T-Mobile user, as I go from one, one uh, network to the other from Wi-Fi to cellular, that it happens seamlessly. Secondly, when you're doing that, it also implies a, a certain level of robustness or, or comes along with that word when people say carrier, uh, they mention that it's robust and secure. And uh, thirdly, it's also a network that will touch on all the points I just spoke about. So someone is actually monitoring the performance of that, that network. Someone is keeping track that we're going from N to AC, and there's a plan to evolve that network as time goes in. It's not a simple uh, drop an AP design, walk away. There's actually someone behind that as technology evolves, being able to keep that up to speed. And that, right. that's what I interpret from my definition of a carrier grade. So putting these processes in place for uh, proper design and proper monitoring and so on, I mean, this is, this could, presumably take a lot of the Wi-Fi problems that everybody experience out of the equation essentially, but it's also a cost clearly for the venues and so on. How do you, how do you see that? Or, or is the market ready to go that extra mile, pay that extra amount to, to get the right quality? I, I would say yes, especially the fact that uh, Wi-Fi today, the new applications passing over it. So there's a big push on voice over Wi-Fi, as you know, uh, there's more and more devices connecting, there's more congestion, more traffic passing on Wi-Fi, and the only way we're gonna be able to keep up with that is to have the proper planning, uh, maintenance, and, and follow through instead of just designing and walking away. And the incremental cost to monitor and use solutions like Aggregate where you can easily upgrade a project over time are minimal compared to having complaining customers at hotels and venues that Wi-Fi is not working or you go to a public venue and you're not you get a bad image because you weren't able to have a good throughput. Right. So Scott, let's talk a little bit about indoor versus outdoor Wi-Fi because indoor has obviously been uh, popular and widely deployed for a very long time. We're now seeing, for example, well, of course, carriers getting into outdoor Wi-Fi, but also uh, cities and so forth. Um, how do you, uh, how do you see the, the outdoor segment of Wi-Fi growing? Because I, I tend, tend to think that it is growing substantially, but what's your view on that? So my view is that it is growing, and I guess as we go into the five gigahertz technology, we'll be able to properly sectorize and, and uh, create smaller cells. But one of the challenges with outdoor, coming from the outdoor world where I used to do plan uh, cellular networks, is that when you're in outdoor, you're covering a very big area and you run into capacity issues right away. So 
maybe in the higher frequencies of Wi-Fi we'll have appropriate solution, but I have a feeling if we go full outdoor with Wi-Fi, very quickly we're gonna run into some of the solutions that people are trying to do by bringing uh, offloading indoors and things like this. So does IB Wave do both? Do you also do the outdoor uh, um, design part? So we right now the only thing missing in our solution to cover full outdoor is that we don't take into account the, the geo data. So if there's different uh -huh. elevations, but we are able to support campus situations for hotels, universities. So let's say a city block that composed of multiple buildings, we do have the ability to propagate indoor and outdoor in those scenarios. Right, very good. I want to ask you a little bit about uh, the Wi-Fi industry developing uh, relative for, to, for example, the DAS, the indoor cellular industry, if you like, or the indoor cellular solutions, because we've seen, of course, uh, over the past year, year and a half, that Wi-Fi calling has come into play by and has been uh, launched by a number of uh, big carriers. Uh, do you think, and, and the reason why I'm asking you this is because obviously you do both, you do Wi-Fi and you do a lot of cellular as well. So do you think that Wi-Fi calling might eventually displace uh, the need for DAS maybe a number of years from now? From what I've seen in my observations right now is the Wi-Fi calling has been a great solution for the carriers, for small office, home office, and even residential users. Uh, take myself example situation. I work in the industry, but in my house, I have horrible cell phone coverage. And my options up until recently were install a signal booster and try to have some sort of indoor design, which is very expensive. But now with uh, voice over Wi-Fi, I'm able to have wall-to-wall -wall impeccable coverage in my house. Uh, as far as that solution in an office building where you have a lot higher capacity of people that are not only using that Wi-Fi for voice, but for data solutions, you have tablets, laptops, uh, cell phones, all, all sucking data from here, I still see there's going to be a big push in DAS. And we, we still see it now, right? If we look at the world today, there's a lot more Wi-Fi deployments that exist inside buildings. And yet we've, we're seeing exponential growth in the DAS world uh, around the world in, in all the markets as, as we're visiting. So still a lot of investment going into DAS, even though voice over Wi-Fi is there. And the other thing that I, I've observed is even the usage pattern of people people are talking less and less on their phones. People are using more email, text messaging, and things like that. So just from the usage pattern, uh, I see that it's a great solution for residential, small office, home office, but at large in uh, big public space and in, in big office towers, you're still gonna need that that's in, in the long run. Great stuff, Scott. I think that's a really good comment. I, I just wanna maybe uh, you know end us with a sort of a general question that I, nearly always ask all my, my guests here, and that if you could have anything you wanted within the Wi-Fi space happen, what would it be? Uh, I, I would say the, well, we're seeing it on almost every level. At the hardware level, we're seeing convergence. So big announcement uh, recently, Cisco Ericsson, I think you, you have been mentioned yourselves, a partnership between them. On our devices, every tablet, laptop, uh, and even a cell phone has Wi-Fi cellular, capabilities but when it comes to the design teams i still see two separate camps so if i could have one thing it would be that people start learning each other so learning both and follow this head net wave that we're seeing uh, my forecast is that as we approach 5g and in the future we're going to start seeing that people will have to design for both all the hardware is there the tools that we use are, are getting there but at the designer camp i still see there's a bit of a mismatch of people experiencing the knowledge of, uh, of both worlds. Yeah, it's so interesting that you say that because nearly everybody that I speak with, uh, and, you know, talks about that, that the fact that the Wi-Fi team designing is a completely different team than the cellular team. And, and I think that's, uh, it shouldn't be like that. I think uh, people should learn from each other and, and come together and all that. And this thing is a really good comment. So uh, Scott Perr, it's great to have you on the show. I want to thank you for coming. And by the way, I should also mention that not Scott himself, unfortunately, but the, the IB Wave team will be at uh, Wi-Fi and other conference and expo in DC, so you can get lots more information on uh, IB Wave solutions uh, at our event coming up there. Scott, thank you so much for joining us, and come back and, and join us again. Thanks, that was my pleasure. Thanks a lot. Great, thank you. Thanks. Bye.
All right, everybody, that's it for today's show. On my next episode, I will be interviewing the CEO of the world's largest Wi-Fi network. His name is Gary Griffiths, and the company, of course, is iPass. So make sure you don't miss that uh, update on all things mass market Wi-Fi. So that's coming up on the next episode. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Uh, thanks to my guest, Scott Ferrer from ID Wave. And I'll see you next time. Wi-Fi Now is a production of RCR TV News. To suggest a show topic or to learn more about Wi-Fi Now events, you can reach Klaus Heading at klaus at headingconsulting.com. To find out more about Wi-Fi Now and all things wireless, visit rcrwireless.com.